live Monday morning. Ready to go. I'm just waiting for this to pop up so that I can put and tag everyone in here. Sharon, how are, how are you on this magical Monday morning? Wonderful. You? Oh, I'm great. Had a great weekend. I just actually first workout in the home gym this morning, and it's still a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Janky. <laughs> Like I don't, it doesn't have flooring yet. It's like concrete floor, but yeah. man, it feel it felt good. Like, cause I'm like, I'm pretty reserved in the gym. I'm not the guy that's going to like yell my head off and cause a scene, Yeah. but at home, it's I will different. definitely do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by yeah. the way, speaking of my home gym, as you can Where's see, I have some battle scars from assembling. Yeah. I was uh, on the floor yesterday. I got this awesome bench and I was tightening the last, it was the last one tightening the last uh, little, little bolt. And as I was tightening it, slipped, hit myself in the noggin. I'm like, oh, I'm like making all this noise. My wife comes. It's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I just need a second. I need a second. I'm sitting there. And then I like go to touch it. And I look at my hand and there's blood. And I'm like, uh, let me get up. <laughs> I'm like, let me, let me go to the bathroom. But as you can see, it's left a little bit of a shiner. A little bit. Anyway, that's not what today's about. No. If you guys are here, feel free to like this video. Let me know you're here. Uh, when you like this, it sends out to more people. Also, feel free to ask a question. I, I do see some comments coming in already. I see some hello, everyone. But won't let me see your name unless I go back. Gloria, good morning. Always good to see your, see your name there, Gloria. I would say your face, but all I see is your profile photo. Today, we're talking about the importance of measuring for results, featuring the lovely, the only, the one and only Coach Sharon. She's great. She's here. She's back. Huskies and all. Yeah. She's ready to go. <laughs> yep. I love it. Okay. Keep so there's a lot of things we can talk about here, right? We can talk about the importance of measuring food. We can talk about the importance of measuring weight. We can talk about the importance of measuring uh, mental state. We can talk about the importance of measuring workouts. But what, out of all the things that we could measure, what is the first thing, most important thing that comes to you, to your mind, Sharon, that we must measure for results? Nutrition. Why? Why is it so important? <laughs> because to I said so. nutrition. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because because I lead the because I because I'm running the show, baby. It's a really long time, and I'm telling you because I said so. Um, however, I'll, I'll support that now. Please. <laughs> so you know, we've all heard, we've all heard, heard like Ryan just said, it's really important to measure uh, yes. for a number of reasons. One is whether you're talking about nutrition or literally your measurements of your body or your weight. Yes or your mindset on, on all these different topics. Yes. If you don't understand what, a, what your baseline is and you don't, and you don't establish what your goal is, you will never get there because it's always moving. It's a moving target and sure. some things need to be static. Not that your goals can't change and they should actually along the way, but yes. you need a starting point and you need, certainly need that baseline. Yes. From I, a, okay. Yeah. No, oh, I was just going to say, I, I totally agree. I think that, how do you know your next move if you don't know where you are, right? Because I, I think we've talked about this in the past. We've talked about this idea of it is better to test and iterate than to plan perfectly. And I feel like a lot of the time we want the perfect plan. We want all the stars to align. Okay, I know exactly where I am and I know every step I need to take to get to my final goal. But the reality is that's not life. Life is not the plan you create. Like, think about it. When you were 20 years old, did you think you were going to be here now? Was this, was this everything go as plan, right? You're going to go to college. You're going to, you know, marry the perfect guy or whatever. Like, no, it didn't go as planned. What happened? You had a general plan. You took the first step and then maybe one year went by and then you readjusted depending on where you were at. And it's the same exact thing. The way you win to sustainable weight loss is simply by testing and iterating. And the only way to test and iterate is to know where you are. Hence, you have to measure. That's my rant. <laughs> so, so let's talk specifically nutrition. Let's do it. Um, I'm a I'm a research study kind of gal, and there was a study that came out a few years ago, and I'm sure there have been others, but I, I use the same one just because it, it's been supported. So I just keep using the same one. Basically, yes. what it boiled down to was, um, they were testing the idea of do nutritionists need to measure their food? That's really what it boiled down to. So you figure 
nutritionists shouldn't have to measure their food, right? They have some magical scale in their head and they can look at it and go, mm, that's 3.2 yeah. ounces, right? I do that. Yeah. <laughs> and so the short version of this research study is yes. they found that nutritionists were wrong. Like they were unable to look at food consistently. And yes. because of that, they under, uh, they under reported their calories Yes. as much as 800 calories a day. Right. So this yes. isn't like 10 calories here, especially right. when you're on maintenance, 10 calories here or there, no big deal. Sure. If you're on weight loss, if you're, yes. so there's a, there's a weight loss, right? And then there's maintenance. And if yes. you don't know how to eat right here before you go into maintenance, you're going to fail. But that's this, another topic. So measuring is, your, pardon? I was going to say, yeah, this right. is like right in line, I believe, with uh, something significant. Like you had just said, for example, like they underreported their calories up to 800. How many calories do we need per day to simply lose a pound of fat a week? We need 500 calorie deficit per day. If the average person eats 2000 calories for maintenance, let's just, you know, keep it simple and say that's the case. 20%, 25% is the difference between maintenance and fat loss. So if you're, if, if we're missing it, like it might sound like, okay, I put in, you know, I ate an apple, right? I don't know if it was a medium apple or a large apple. I don't really care. Whatever. Let me just put something in. And I will say that that is better than not tracking at all. Cause then you're, you know, who knows we're way off. We have no basis to start. But with that in mind, the difference between a large apple and a medium apple is a hundred calories or 75 calories. And again, for that one thing we implemented that one thing we input, well, what's 25 calories? Well, if we add that up through the day, the difference between that 25% is maintenance or fat loss. And this is, I think, where a lot of people run into the challenges like you're talking about, right? They run into this position where they're tracking their food and they say, I don't get it. Why aren't I losing weight? I'm doing everything right. And the answer is, you're right. You are doing everything right from an action perspective, but the measuring is slightly off. And nine times out of 10, I can promise you, it's not your hormones, <laughs> right? Don't get me wrong. Those play an effect. But ultimately, if you're still in a caloric deficit, you'll win. You'll still lose weight. And usually all we need to do is go in and look at everything you're tracking and actually measure it properly. And you would think that it equals out. Oh, well, I'm 20% over here. I'm 20% under here. But just like Coach Sharon said, we greatly tend to under report. And part of that is because we don't want to see the red number in the app. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I'm putting that red number in the app and I see negative 45, I'm like, oh, I failed, right? But, you know, it's just a funny thing to think about. So, so measuring food, um, like I, I use a, you don't need to buy a, an expensive digital scale. I've used, sure. I had this. I don't know how many years I've used this. I've I've had this plastic scale for years and I thought, ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna buy this yeah. cool little digital one so when I travel, I can bring this with me. Like when I yeah, stay yeah, yeah. with family. Yeah. And I bought it and it's slick. And, and it's, yeah, it looks cool, it's <laughs> but it it's still small. weighs the same amount. <laughs> it's small for traveling, it's really effective. And then yeah. I thought this is kind of a pain. So I bought a different plastic one yeah. that works even better. Yes. And it didn't cost a lot of money. And so now I have one at my mom's. I have one at my house. Right. So measuring food is really important. And I'll oh, give a tremendous. couple examples. Let's talk about, um, I'll, I'll give, I'll start with two examples. One is, and I use this often. Yes. If you're eating peanut butter, we talked about this last week, a little bit of peanut did, butter. Yeah. So if you're eating a nut butter and I'm going to say peanut butter, yes. and by the way, always buy natural nut butter. Yeah. However, so if you take a tablespoon, like you're holding a two tables, like it's this big, right? Picture your yes. two tablespoon, little spoon, right? Yes. And you, you fill it as much as you can with peanut butter and you scrape right. it along the edge. So it's yep. flat, right? Yep. Like your mom taught you when you were whatever age, like with <laughs> the flour, when you were yep. measuring for chocolate chip cookies, whatever you're making. So those two tablespoons, about 180 calories, if it's a natural nut butter. Yes. For people who just take the spoon and go, yeah, it's about it. And yeah. It. Yep. Yeah. Even if you are only off, even if yep. you are only off a quarter of it, of, of the 180, 
Yep. That's almost, that's like 40 calories, more than 40 calories. Right. And so you do that. Let's just say that's the only thing you do inaccurately. Like you measure, you do not measure all week. Yes. After a week, you take those 40, whatever calories times seven. That's, oh, that'll be 300 calories. Cause I rounded right. down to 40. That's Which is roughly 10% of what would be needed to lose that pound. Exactly. Yes. Right. And that's just your peanut butter. So now if you look at the BLTs, the bites, the licks and the taste that you don't register, that you don't track. Yes. And you do that every day. Right. You're feeding your kid and you're like, oh, I'll just, you know, finish this right. last. I like that. The BLTs. Whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And the bites, the licks and the tastes over the week, they truly add up. Now, am I yeah. going to tell you not to have BLTs? No. The question is. How do you work them in? Yeah how you work them in or the way I look at it is every choice you make either brings you and pulls you further away from your goal or brings you towards your goal. Yes. So if that BLT is what you want, that's fine. But like Ryan said, then figure it out somewhere else in that day to, to balance it back out or it's going to happen day after day because that yes. will become a habit because you're reinforcing it. Yes. And I know for, for my clients in the past too, we would actually allocate like a hundred, it depends on the person, right? But a hundred to 200 calories, not maybe per day, maybe a hundred, 150 calories a day of BLTs that are just going to happen, right? Bites, licks, and tastes. They're going to happen. So if we can work that in, then you don't have to feel the guilt associated with it and you can still get great results. We had a couple comments come in really quick that I want to hit. Kylie says, Wow, this makes so much sense. Definitely need to be more accurate in amounts and sizes of fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Kylie says, not the peanut butter. <laughs> yes, the peanut butter. You know, it, it really is so profound how it adds up. And I think that this really, again, goes back into beliefs where if you believe your body is different, if you believe that the reason you can't transform your body is because of something outside your control, i.e. hormones, i.e. your age, then that will be your fate. However, if you have the belief that wherever you are and wherever you want to be, you have the capacity to get there, your mind will find other answers to the reasons that you're not able to lose weight. Here's the example, right? Somebody is not, and this is why I come on here and like, I know like a lot of our coaches are so, so intelligent, so, 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 um, so knowledgeable of the pieces and mechanics of weight loss, which is beautiful. And they obviously have the psychology there as well. But I know that none of that matters and none of that will sit with anybody if they don't believe that they can make a change. So at the end of the day, when it comes to that level of belief, if you believe you can, then you will find different answers. So in this case, somebody says, well, I know I can get there, but I'm not losing weight. So what's missing? And then they're able to find something like this. Oh man, it's because I'm not measuring properly. And then all they have to do is make that one tweak and everything changes. Everything. I had a client and here's a perfect example. Uh, uh, this going all the way back. Uh, actually, uh, I remember, I was trying to remember her name because she was one of my like fourth clients. I only worked with her for about three months. But her name was actually Sharon as well. Um, she was a nurse way before we started only working with nurses and she was late twenties, like 28, 29, wanted to lose about a hundred pounds. And I remember uh, I said, okay, track all your food for a week and then come back to me. This is before we started working together, tracked all her food. I inputted it. She was eating 1400 calories a day and not losing weight. And I was like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Her BMR like how many calories she's just burning at rest, like with daily activity and everything. Like she's looking at, so her BMR, so basal metabolic rate plus activities of daily living, is having her sitting at like 2,300, which meant that she should be losing about two pounds a week almost, 1.8 pounds a week eating that little. She wasn't losing any weight. And this was consistent. And I'm like, huh, what's going on? And I said, oh my God, maybe it is her metabolism. And of course, me being uneducated at the time, I was about 19 years old. And I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is the person I can't help. You know, I've been a coach for a few years now. I'm like, maybe this is it. Maybe, maybe this is where I need to go back to college and learn this stuff and, you know, find more help. And even through my continued education, back at that point, I realized after we dug into her day to day, like, okay, take me through 
your day to day. And she's like, well, I did have half a cheese stick, but I didn't think I should write that down. <laughs> right. Or like, oh man, the, the bites, the licks and the taste, they add up. And when we went back, we actually found she was eating about 2,100 calories a day, which is why she wasn't losing weight. And it's just crazy. We cannot master what we do not measure. And it, I think, I think in today's day and age, it's more relevant than ever. What is every business after, right? What is Facebook after? What is uh, Google after? They're after our what? Time and money. Time. No, just kidding. They're after our what? Well, no, they're after, and when it comes down to it, they they want our time and money. That's and, what they want. And in a D word, pocket. data. <laughs> they want our data. They want information because why? They know information is power. Just like this. Right now, the importance of measuring for results, it's information. Why do you want that information? Because then you can make better decisions. The reason Google and Facebook want our data, they want to know, you know what your age is, what your buying habits are, all this stuff, is so that with that data, they can give you different ads that are going to convert better. So that they can take your attention even more on YouTube and get you to stick because they know the next video is going to be just for you and you're going to stick and watch it. Data is power in the wrong hands, or in this case, in the right hands, in your hands, when you know what you're eating, when you know what's going into your body calorie-wise, the truth, not what we think, but the truth, the real data, you can transform everything. Well, and I think it's important to, to make the distinction. So if you're looking, if you go to the store and you buy something and you've been trained to start looking at serving sizes, yes, know that Good point. Some of that information is not accurate. All right. Yes. And I'm going to give an example. Please. Um, we had bought, um, we ended up, uh, it's for one of our dogs. We had bought some canned chicken. Okay. We went to, we went to Sam's club. This has nothing to do with Sam's club. I'm not going to tell you the brand that it was, but we went there, we bought all this canned chicken, come home and you know, I'm feeding the dogs with him, whatever. So yes. I'm looking at it because I, who I am. And I, I look at the nutrition just because that's what I do. It's like, that's not that because I'm, I'm putting it into a bowl. I'm like, that's not, there isn't that many ounces of chicken in here. So I thought I'm going to measure this, right? This was yeah. a while ago. Yeah. So I pull out my handy dandy little plastic scale and I'm looking at the, the can. I was like, there is not, I can't remember. I think it must have said it was like 10 and a half ounces or something. There yeah. is not 10 ounces of, of chicken in this. Like I, yes. I know, like I can, I know it. So I talk about the servings per container. Well, at that point, I was looking at the entire container. I was like, all right. right. Okay. Per container. Right. Yeah. So it says 10 ounces, but it's, but it's not. It's not. It's much less. How much was it? So I, I got the water. I drained it. I stick it and I scale it, put it on the scale. And it's like six and a half ounces. Wow. And so I'm bringing that up again. I'm not bringing out the company. I'm not going back to them and saying, I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, what's up chicken of the sea? No, <laughs> right. but what I'm, I'm making the point to everyone who's watching, whether it's now or in a replay is that you have, if you're taking control of your life, yes, you need to measure your food. Don't assume, don't assume that the label is correct Yes, because there's a good chance it isn't. Now the FDA allows for some leeway based on like the, yeah, of course. when they report on calories and whatever, but there's a big difference between 10 and six or 10 and a half. Oh, I mean, whatever I mean, that's it was. almost half, right? I mean, that's, right. that's significant. You need to measure. Measure! Because there's power in measuring, right? And I will say really quick, we had a comment come through. Michelle, uh, Michelle Clembury says, I'm inspired to use my food scale. That's what I like to hear. We are here to inspire. Also, if you guys are watching this either live or on recording, feel free to like this video. It shows it to more people in the group if you think this is helpful for you or somebody else. Or, or and also, we're not we don't want to talk at you. So like, drop some comments, engage, say hey, even if you're just saying hi. So we know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. I know you're out there. But uh, drop a comment or a question as well. We'd love to hear it. And um, yeah, I feel like this is profound too in leaning towards single ingredient foods. Now, I want to say two quick things. The first one is. I don't actually believe that during maintenance, you should track your food forever if you're not a professional athlete. Now, that's me. That's my preference. And that's just because I prefer lifestyle over that. And as long as I can maintain my weight or as long as a client can maintain their weight without measuring, good. doesn't matter. 
because why would you put your focus towards it if that extra focus isn't getting you any more result, right? But to Sharon's point, especially while you're learning, right? Because when you have a coach and when you're starting your journey, this is a learning process, right? Like we should be learning, you know, at the rate that you feel comfortable with so that you can take that into your maintenance period. So that is a caveat I will say. Number two, uh, man, number one was so strong, I forget my two. <laughs> I think number two was, uh, it was it was about, uh, oh, single ingredient foods. So this is the power of single ingredient foods because when we have multiple things, like for example, oh, I went to uh, Panera and I grabbed their um you know chicken salad which is fine is that a better choice than like mcdonald's or something else yes and you should be applauded for that choice that's amazing uh, at the same token if we are trying to gather all the data and have it be accurate you know the it might be a different person working that day and chipotle is a great example i go to chipotle i get the same exact burrito every time and i'll tell you what sometimes the burrito is this big and sometimes the burrito is this big i ordered the same thing why because some people are more generous they think they're helping you out by giving you more steak or more this and more that and that 25 percent variance the difference between giving you four ounces instead of five giving you one cup instead of a cup and a quarter that adds up and if that added up for every single meal that's why you're not losing weight 25 percent is all it takes from where you are above to have zero weight loss. So the power of single ingredient foods is you know exactly what you're eating. That's why, and I'm not here advocating eat chicken and rice forever. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is there is power in having single ingredient foods and not like, you know, getting a bunch of stuff together that you're adding more variety and it's kind of guessing. But there's that balance, right? Balance between quality of life and also accurate data. There was a question that came in. I know, Sharon, you wanna, you're gonna hit me with something good. I know it. Kylie says, I've never thought to second guess the amount of my products. Guess I will start looking at this. It makes a difference on the calories, uh, et cetera, that I'm eating versus what the label says. Yes. And remember, all it takes is a 25% difference, right? The average person is eating 2,000 calories a week for maintenance. 1,500 per day is how you lose one pound of pure body fat per week. If you're 25% above that number, you lose nothing. And it's easy to get into the thinking, especially with today's day and age, right? Oh, it's your hormones. It's this, it's, you know, giving away power. But when we take the power back, we realize that, oh my gosh, this is actually in my control. And that should be empowering, right? That should be empowering that, oh my gosh, I can control this. Yeah, baby, let's go. Oh, you're one food scale away from transforming your whole body. Let's go. That's fucking cool. All right, that fires me up. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to follow that. I, right. I think, Come on, baby. Follow yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, what I would say is some people are really structured. They like structure. Some people do not like structure. And yeah, it's more freedom. They want it. Right. My, wife's and, my, my wife doesn't like to eat the, you know, like she just wants to be able to go with what feels good, you know, but follow like, okay, I know I should be having some protein. I know I should be having some carbs. But, you know, she's like, uh, she does eat rice and beans a lot. She's Brazilian. So we eat like rice and beans every night. So that's kind of single ingredient and easy, but <laughs> there's some other stuff peppered in. <laughs> yeah. And everyone needs, each person, if they want to be successful for the long term, and that's what we yes. teach, we, we teach lifestyles. So if you that's want to be successful about. for the long term, you need to find what works for you. And, and I stress that with my clients, but yes. it's important to, to understand why I, I yes. can tell you, I can tell you exactly what to eat and you're going to, you're going to lose weight or you're going to build muscle. Right. I, right. Let's build muscle. I like muscle, right? Let's build some muscle. Let's go. Um, <laughs> we're going to have a gun show. I'll pull, I'll pull out my bicep. Yeah, come on. I haven't seen, I haven't seen your guns this month. There you come go. Come on. Um, so the question is, if I tell you what to eat, yes, are you going to keep doing it after you maintain or are, like if right. you do it, if you do something for a day, that's good. If you yeah. do something for a week, that's good. If you do it for 30 yes. days, that's good. But a yeah. lifestyle is stringing together many, many 30 day periods together. And the yes. question is, 
do you want me to tell you exactly what to eat for the rest of your life? Like, yeah. you're probably going to say no. And if you don't say no, I'm going to question why I'm you're concerned. Asking. Yeah. <laughs> so, but getting you, teaching you how to eat and what to eat and portion control as you lose weight and having you make some of those decisions. Yeah. That's for most people, even people who are very structured, that will stick with them longer because they'll know I can eat this and I'm good or I eat this and that's just a little too much and my that's too much for me. Yes. And that's part of that is still part of measuring. Like I still want you to measure, but I'll give you a list of foods and I'd rather you choose for most people. I'd rather you choose right. from it. Yes. If not, I can absolutely create a meal plan for you. And I do that very often. Yes. But the idea is you're going to start taking bits and pieces of it yes. to make it your lifestyle. So many months from now, you're golden. There's a lot to be said, too, about what you just said in, in the realm of psychology with making your own choice. There's a reason. And also, if you guys have questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Like this video if you're just tuning in. It shows it to more people. Um, if you have questions for me or Coach Sharon. Coach Sharon, you just said something so powerful. You said, uh, you know, I, I try to give my clients the power of choice. And the reason that's so important is because yes, even though it feels maybe good at times, get a coach, just tell me what to do. I don't want to think. And then they do it. The challenge is on some level, depending on your personality type, we don't hold on to, we don't accept ideas as much that are other people's that are our own. And I know that sounds interesting, but there's something you probably heard it with intuitive eating. If you're listening in the comments, I know Sharon heard of this, but it's the inner rebel, right? If we come up with an idea, it's like, well, you know, of course it's, of course that's a great idea. As long as we have a good self-image, generally we like our own ideas better than others. But if somebody else tells us to do it, and we have a strong inner rebel, our days are numbered with following it, right? So that's why a lot of our coaching usually is like more like, hey, come this way, you know, follow me. Like, what do you think about this? And it's formed by a lot of questions that lead you to the answer so that you have more acceptance over it which is just, you know, a little, little interesting thing. There was a comment that came through really quick. Yeah. Kylie says, it does make it easier when you tell me what to eat, <laughs> but I am learning a lot about making better choices for myself. And just like coach Sharon said, that's the game, baby. Like we are not in one of the, one of the ways I really uh, would like to believe that we are different. And like, we talk about this with the coaching team all the time. And this is why we've remained relatively small as a company, right? We only have three coaches, right? Three active coaches. I kind of am part-time coaching, but because I'm doing everything else, but it's Coach Sharon, Coach Rachel, Coach Charity. And the reason that we've kept a really small coaching team, because it's really hard to find good coaches that like have a ton of experience, that believe the same things. Like, look, we are not trying to get a sexy before and after for six weeks. Now, don't get me wrong. I want you to look great. I want you to feel good in six weeks. But I, I'll tell you what, you know what I care a lot more about than you feeling good in six weeks? You're feeling good in six years. You're feeling good in 16 years. And you get there not by racing. You get there by learning how to fish, right? Everyone wants to be given the fish, right? You've probably heard the proverb. Teach a man to fit or give a man a fish, he eats for a night. Give a man a fish, he eats, or I'm sorry, teach a man a fish, he eats forever. So what we're really trying to do is slowly but surely, yes, we're going to give you some fish. But we also want to teach you how to fish so that you, you essentially have the keys to the castle so that you know this so well that if one of your friends comes to you and is like, oh, man, I'm really struggling, you can essentially be like, oh, hey, here's what you got to do. <laughs> you know, like that's what we want because that's real impact. I do not. I, I remember I used to measure. I used to measure uh, our, one of the successes of our coaching in one of my first gyms with how much weight people have lost. But the problem with that was we didn't track if they gained it back or not. And that's troubling because 95 to 97% of people that lose weight gain it back at some point. And I've, I've said in some, in some conversations I've had with uh, some of our RNs that I like to think of our program like the anti-coach, right? We are not here to just give you fitness, nutrition, and accountability. And when you don't do it to say, well, don't you want this? That's not what this is about. This is about breaking it down to the most fundamental first principles to be able to really get into a place with these habits that you feel pulled towards them by starting with low effort, high reward activities 
so you can start getting pulled towards them, teach you the education that's necessary, only the most next most important thing so you don't feel overwhelmed. And then slowly but surely, in 12 weeks or 24 weeks, you stick your head up, you look around, and you feel like, huh, this doesn't feel like it used to. But there's a reason it didn't feel like it used to. Because this time it feels like you're just living your life. And that's how it should feel. Weight loss should not feel like you're on a sprint to the finish. 75 hard, baby. I got 35 more days and then I'm done and I'm going. That's not what this is about. This is boring. Weight loss, truly sustainable weight loss is boring. Sharon, how excited are you to just like live your fit life? Are you like over the moon when you wake up in the morning, just like, you know, beating your chest, ready to take on the world? Like, no, it, you're just living your life. It's the same with me. I'm just living my life. I don't think about fitness that much. It's just who I am. And that's boring. But that's what weight loss is. That's what building a successful business is. That's what building a, a marriage is, right? Yep. A happy marriage is boring. It's not the next high all the time. And that's what this is. So like, but here's the thing. If it's easy, how long can you do it for? Forever. So it should be easy and boring. Yep. If, you're, if you're chasing the high, don't fall into that habit. Don't fall into that fallacy of human nature, which is I'm going to get all fired up and then I'm going to go reach it. But then, cause that high doesn't last. And then you're just back to where you were stuck. And then you, you follow what I call the crazy eight. And you know, maybe you guys are here and you might've heard this before where we get to a point that we get angry and we say, you know what? Enough's enough. I'm done with this. No more sugar. You throw it all away. You say, that's enough. I'm going all in now. And you flex the muscle and you get serious. And then that lasts for two, four, six, eight, 12 weeks. But then eventually what happens? You can't flex the muscle forever. And eventually you have to let go. And as it lets go, you go from angry to now being sad and depressed. And now that sadness and depression leads to, oh God, this isn't working. What am I even doing? This is, and then we relax the muscle and then we get depressed. But guess what? You can't be sad forever. So eventually you get angry again. And we go from sad and angry, sad to angry. And that's been, I've been on that cycle even, but that's a cycle that we want you to be off of. And the way you get off of it is by not having as many highs and lows and just being more consistent and gradual and stoic. So that's what we're here to help you guys with. You know, the goal is to lose weight and sustain it forever. Comments came in really quick. Uh, Kylie says, thank you for teaching me to fish. Woo! Is Kylie your client, Sharon? No, Michelle oh. is. Kylie is not. Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> but okay, Michelle, it's beautiful. Perfect. Thank you for teaching me how to fish. I've needed this for a long time. I have jumped on the I have jumped on the yo-yo for too long, right? It's so common. Uh closing thought, Sharon. Oh, Kylie says Rachel. Uh, Anna also says, hello, getting a lot of protein in my diet is hard as I cannot digest meat. Therefore, I've hit a plateau. So, Anna, I will say uh, really quick, you've hit a plateau with how much protein you've get in, or how much protein you can get in, or you've hit a protein with how much weight loss. Oh, I'm sorry. Or you've hit a plateau with how much weight loss you can have. Because how much protein you get in doesn't uh, directly correlate to how much weight you can lose. What controls how much weight you lose is how big of a caloric deficit you have. How much protein you get in will contribute more to how much muscle you're able to maintain, depending on where you're at, as you're at a caloric deficit, and how hungry you are and some other factors. So, Anna, before we end, feel free to just let me know that we can help you more. Uh, finishing thoughts there, Coach Sharon. Um, you know, I would say if someone were just tuning in and wanted the, the short version of this, you know, I'm going to say mindset and yes. measure your food. Mindset, you know, if you want measure. details, listen to the podcast, but yes. you have to believe in the process. And you know, I, yes. I talk about, I say, trust the process often, plateauing yes. or not. If you follow, if you follow a sound process, you're going to get through it. And part of that yes. is mindset. And I will finish that with also measure your mindset. And I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds super funky and like, I got to think about my feelings. That's dumb. Just tell me what to do. But here's what I can tell you is you cannot master what you do not measure. If you are trying to master your emotions, you should probably measure that too. That's why for a lot of our clients, at least when they start every day, it's, hey, what's your stress level on a scale of one to 10? And I promise you that once you've been in this program for four to six weeks, you're waking up to that same fucking message and you're like, I don't want to answer this anymore. But look, the reason we still ask it is because 
where focus goes, energy flows, and results soon follow, right? If we want to change our thinking, which changes our actions permanently, which changes our results permanently, we have to change our input. And where you focus, your attention goes. And that's what we're trying to do every day is say, what are the things that are important to me by looking at them, acknowledging them, and then your brain starts to solve for them without you even having to think about it a lot of times. And we could talk about that tremendously, the power of the subconscious mind, but that's not what this podcast is about. So we are done. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it is, like it, comment, and come back, ask some questions. We love you all. Our mission is to impact 100,000 RNs, and you are helping us get there. We want to have our little impact on healthcare. See you guys soon. Oh, sorry. Comment came in really fast. Can't end it yet. <laughs> comment came in and it says, need to know how much protein I really need to build muscle and also burn the visceral fat uh, so I can break the plateau. Okay, really quick. Great question. I need to know how much protein I really need to build muscle and also burn the visceral fat so I can break the plateau. There's two parts to that question. It is extremely challenging to build muscle and burn fat at the same time, unless you are a totally deconditioned beginner. If you have any experience exercising, like you've already been doing it for a little while and you're not looking to lose hundred pounds or more, this would be, you know, just giving you a general answer. You need to focus on one thing at a time because in order to build muscle, you need to be in a slight caloric surplus. In order to burn fat, you need to be in a caloric deficit. Those don't align. This is why bodybuilders traditionally follow bulks and cuts. They don't bulk just so they can get fat and eat whatever they want. They bulk so they can add muscle and then minimize the amount of fat they gain. So when they then cut, they keep the muscle and they shred the overlying layer of fat. That is the truth, right? Anyone who's trying to like give you the idea and you might say also like, oh, but why do I see my muscles more when I, when I diet? Well, it's because you're losing the overlying layer of fat. Usually, and I know this is going to sound crazy, if you do a DEXA scan, which is essentially body fat, you know, skeletal muscle, water scan, all that, even though you look more toned after losing fat, you've actually, in a lot of cases, lost muscle, even minorly. So keep that in mind. When you're losing fat, you are very often not gaining muscle. And the other way around is also true. So to answer your question, how much protein do you need to build more muscle? It's not just protein. It's how many calories. And you have to decide what's more important to you right now. Gaining muscle or losing fat, right? And then also burn the visceral fat, same thing. So visceral, uh, regardless of whether it's visceral fat or uh, uh, subcutaneous fat or whatever it is, you burn fat the same way, caloric deficit. Caloric deficit means you're eating less calories than you burn. If you want to lose one pound of whatever fat per week, it's 500 calories deficit per day, which is why we talked about what we talked about as far as measuring. Because when you measure, you have power. And that's how you break the plateau. Um, Sharon, anything to add to that? Do you agree, disagree? Tell me to jump off a cliff because I'm wrong. No, nope, I agree. <laughs> it's that simple. Yep. It's that simple, baby. Okay. This has been great. Thank you. Our pleasure. We're here to help. Guys, we're going to be going live. Uh, I'm going to go live solo probably today or tomorrow. Talk to you about mindset, getting you in the right place. We're going to go live on Friday and Thursday with Coach Charity and Coach Sharon as well. I'm sorry, Coach Rachel. If there's anything you want us to talk about, feel free to let us know. Drop a comment below. We're here to serve you. Whether you're a client or not, we're here to serve you. We want to help you break through. There's no reason that 2024 cannot be the year that you decide I'm going to break through and I'm going to accept responsibility. That is powerful to accept responsibility to say, I am not going to blame my body. I am not going to blame my age. If I truly want this, I will find the way. And guess what? You can. And if you are and you want to, you're in the right place. So let's get it done. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Love you. Bye.